London Municipal Affairs for January 29th, 2024. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Starting today and every last Monday of each month moving forward, we're bringing you a unique edition of Municipal Affairs, where we will be previewing upcoming by-elections, but also sharing unfiltered opinions on major municipal issues. Now, this isn't your typical episode. It's a fresh perspective on issues shaping our communities across Canada. So let's head to the by-elections first. Across various municipalities in Canada, citizens are gearing up to exercise their democratic right and shape the future of their local governments in February. First up on February 6th, the village of Cremona, Alberta, will be heading to the polls for an essential by-elections to choose a new councillor. Moving eastwards to the province of Quebec, specifically the town of Sutton, from February 9th to February 23rd, citizens in District 1 will have the opportunity to put forward nominations for the position of councillor. Now let's fast forward six days to February 12th, where the scenic North Rustico in Prince Edward Island will be holding a by-election for the position of councillor. is the chance for residents to choose a representative who will advocate for their interests at the municipal level. On February 13th, one day later, there will be a unique cross-border election in the city of Lloydminster straddling the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan. The residents will be casting their votes to elect a new councillor after former councillor Aaron Buckingham resigned to become the city's fire chief. Heading back to Quebec on February 18th, 2024, the town of Chappas will witness a double feature. On this day, residents will be electing a new mayor, as well as choosing individuals to fill positions four and position five in the municipal council. On February 20th marks an election day for the village of Big Valley in Alberta. Residents will be selecting two councillors from a list of four candidates, so every vote counts in shaping the direction of this close-knit community. Moving on to February 21st, the Municipal District of Greenview, specifically Ward 9, will be holding an election for the position of councillor. This is your chance to have your say in the representation of your ward, Ward 9. Lastly, on February 26th, both Rocky Mountain House and the Town of Mayor Thorpe in Alberta will be holding by-elections for the position of councillor. It is the day where the voices of every citizen can shape the local government landscape. We'll be right back with our unfiltered opinion. Today, we're going to dive into a subject that affects every municipality, the need for municipal fiscal reform. Now, we're going to be diving into a crucial aspect of Canadian municipal finances, the heavily reliance on property taxes of all municipalities. This topic has far-reaching implications for fiscal health of our local governments in Canada. So, let's unpack the intricacies, the challenges, and even the pressing need for change of this structure. In the intricate tapestry of Canadian municipal finances, one thread stands out starkly, the heavily reliance on property taxes. As one of the primary financial challenges facing local governments, this dependence has far-reaching implications for the fiscal health of all municipalities. Municipalities, as the bedrock of our great nation, have a colossus responsibility, providing essential services, maintaining infrastructure, and assuring the well-being of all of its residents. To fulfill these obligations, they heavily rely on revenue generated through property taxes. So let's uncover the rationale behind this dependence, though. Unlike higher levels of government, municipalities have limited avenues for generating revenue. Property taxes become the go-to method for funding public services and infrastructure projects. Why? Well, alternatives like a sales tax or an income tax are often beyond the jurisdiction of municipalities, leaving them with a constrained toolbox for revenue generation. Property taxes offer something crucial to all municipalities – stability, and predictability. Now, in the face of economic uncertainty, they provide a relatively steady income stream. This stability is vital for municipalities to plan and budget effectively, ensuring a consistent provision of services for all residents. Another aspect of property taxes is the direct link they create between residents and the services they receive. 
Funds collected from property taxes are often earmarked for local services. This fosters a sense of accountability and transparency, as residents can see a tangible relationship between the taxes they pay and the services they enjoy. Now, the Achilles heel of this system emerges when economic downturns or real estate market fluctuations come into play. Economic downturns often lead to a decrease in property values, directly impacting the revenue generated through property taxes. As property values decline, municipalities find themselves facing reduced income, complicating their ability to maintain services and infrastructure at the existing levels they are today. So who bears the blunt of this financial strain? Of course, it's us, the homeowners. In the times of economic hardship, when property values diminish, homeowners find themselves grappling with increased tax burdens. This can exacerbate existing social and economic inadequacies as those who are already financially vulnerable bear the weight of any property tax increase. The reliance on property taxes limit the financial flexibility of municipalities. Unlike higher levels of government, which may have access to broader revenue streams and financial tools, municipalities find themselves in a precarious position. In the times of economic stress, their ability to respond effectively is constrained, potentially leading to service cuts or delayed infrastructure projects. Moreover, property taxes can contribute to inadequacies in revenue distribution. Municipalities with higher property values may enjoy more sustainable revenue streams, while those with lower property values struggle to meet their financial obligations. This disparity can result in uneven service provisions and exacerbate regional economic disparities. Given the vulnerabilities, it's evident that a change is imperative in 2024. Diversifying revenue sources is the key to building financial resilience and ensuring the sustainability of all of our great municipalities. Municipalities must advocate for fiscal decentralization, seeking increased autonomy in revenue generation. This, however, requires a collaborative effort with higher levels of government to devolve financial powers to the municipal level. Local governments should explore alternative revenue sources beyond traditional taxes as well, though. User fees, impact fees, and development charges represent potential avenues for generating income. By diversifying revenue streams, municipalities can reduce the vulnerability to fluctuations in property values and economic downturns. Municipalities can also embrace innovative financial models to fund specific projects or services. Public-private partnerships and community bonds are just some of the examples and mechanisms that allow municipalities to access private capital for essential infrastructure projects. While these models require careful, careful consideration to ensure public interests are protected, they provide an opportunity to share the financial burden and bring in external expertise. Leveraging technologies and data-driven solutions can enhance the efficiency of municipal operations, potentially leading to cost savings and improved financial management. Smart city initiatives, for example, can optimize service deliveries and resource allocation, making municipalities more resilient in the face of financial constraints. The heavy reliance on property taxes in the end indeed is the Achilles heel of Canadian municipalities, exposing them to vulnerabilities that threaten the very fabric of local government. While property taxes play a crucial role in funding essential services, the risks associated with economic downturns and fluctuations in property values cannot be ignored for much longer. As municipalities chart the course forward, a collaborative effort between municipalities, provincial and federal governments, and the communities that the municipal councils serve is essential. Advocacy for fiscal decentralization, exploration of alternative revenue sources, and the embrace of innovative financial models are steps towards building a more resilient and sustainable financial foundation for our local government. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. 
Stay in the loop with all of our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews to our eye-opening exploration of local governments in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we're your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as well-engaged. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.